please join me in that show. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the ten quarters surrounding as a hundredfold, a thousandfold, rejoice in and protect us. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Nam Mandats, Nam Mandats, Nam Mandats. Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to today's last Sunday service in the month of January 2000, the year of 2022. January is almost over. Where did the time go? Where did it all go? It seems that just yesterday we were celebrating our Shogatsu or our Gantane or our New Year's Day service. And now we're approaching the end of the first month of 2022. And it has been somewhat of a uh, up and down, kind of a bumpy, rocky start. But let's hope that uh, in the time to come for 2022, things become brighter and become a little bit better. I also feel that that uh, in January or any time we start the new year, we tend to all get ahead of ourselves. We tend to all uh, become really concerned with getting things done and, and, uh, and starting the year with the running start. We all tend to, I think this, everybody is affected by this. We all want to start the year off strong and we want to uh, you know, really get everything finished. So as part of our Jodo Shinshu doctrine, uh, we are foolish beings, meaning that we are not enlightened. We are unenlightened beings. We are beings who have not yet uh, fully awakened to the ultimate uh, enlightenment or the ultimate truth. And I think part of our bombu nature, bombu means uh, unenlightened being, part of our bombu nature is to always be on the go, go, go. And uh, I think our modern society as it is doesn't really help us all that much uh, with this type of attitude either, um, because now uh, we are able to uh, uh, look up news immediately, or news is delivered to us immediately. Uh, we are able to look up and research facts now um, on our smartphones without having to go to the library and without having to uh, look at uh, one of those gigantic encyclopedias that we sometimes keep on the bookshelf. Uh, my father used to have one. I don't believe I have one now, um, at least in my house, but uh, because I have a smartphone. And if I wanted to find the definition of something or remember or try to figure out what an event was, I just look it up in my smartphone and the answer is given to me right then and there. So I think part of this is uh, what contributes to this, um, this idea that as, as, as unenlightened beings, we're always on the move, we're always on the go, we're you know, always ahead, try to get ahead. So in January, we seem to want to complete the whole year's worth of work before we can even enjoy the year. Uh, you know, usually what ends up happening is that uh, as the new year approaches, we, I brought up the subject of New Year's resolutions. And when we make New Year's resolutions, we say things like, I'm going to work out more, I'm going to lose more weight, I'm going to lose this many pounds, or I'm going to eat healthier. And other times we uh, say that I'm going to work harder at work, or I'm going to get that promotion, or I'm going to do all of these things. And uh, as you can see, we try to do that and we sometimes burn ourselves out within the first week or within the first uh, couple days of the year. We do these incredibly strong exercise regimens and at first we feel great but then our body becomes tired and then uh, we try to get the next week's worth of work uh, submitted and turned in and then we become stressed and we become filled filled with anxiety because then uh, our superiors our, um, our our supervisors will be like wow that's you did some great work so now we expect that level of <laughs> we expect that level of uh, we have that expectation that you're going to deliver that uh, throughout the rest of the year. 
Now, this isn't to blame anyone, or this isn't to say that we're wrong to necessarily do this, or this isn't to say that that we shouldn't accomplish things, or and I'm not, of course, advocating that we should just become lazy. Our lives all have different responsibilities and necessities. We all have our parts to do, and everyone's lives are valid and real. So sometimes we do have stressful weeks. We do have busy weeks. We do have times where we have 13 different pro projects going on, and they're all due on the same day. And um, certainly, I think one of the things that uh, being college students sometimes uh, definitely helps us with is time management because we have so many different classes that we have to take and then what ends up happening is uh, we realize that the deadlines for a lot of the papers are due on the same week or within the same time frame and so we have to learn how to balance our time and then we learn not to procrastinate so much but and so this isn't to say that uh, this isn't to say that I don't think that uh, your uh, deadlines or your work schedule, work schedules aren't real. Uh, but this is to say that sometimes we as people tend to uh, create these uh, sometimes unrealistic goals for ourselves in terms of, uh, you know, what to expect from ourselves. And of course, many of us wear many hats as well. So we aren't just our jobs. We aren't just our careers, right? We are technicians. We are mothers, fathers, siblings, caregivers, researchers, students, teachers, janitors. Sometimes we are everything under one person. Okay, and what that means is then our responsibilities tend to become larger and then our stress and anxiety can become even greater. The Dharma teaches us that time is finite. So one of the things that I've been talking about in my uh, Dharma talks recently, especially during the end of the year and at the beginning of the year, is that time stops for no one. That time uh, continues to move on, the days will continue to turn and the days will become nights and the nights will become morning again. And sometimes we wish we could put pause on, our, uh, on the way that time goes, but we cannot. And then I sometimes think as uh, Buddhists, our Dharma site embraces this fact while our bombu side becomes fearful and tries to run away. Sometimes uh, we become too stressed by time and then we stop entirely and we freeze. But other times we become so stressed by time that we try to outrate, we try to race it, and we try to get ahead of it. But there's also a part of us as well, uh, as we are Buddhists and as we delve into the Buddhist teachings, that also accepts that time doesn't stop. We also do accept that time uh, you know, is something that is forever changing and that in itself is a human construct. We also realize that, that you know, there is nothing we can do to stop time from going. There is nothing that we can do. So therefore we can, in a sense, change our inner thinking on how we deal with that change. Largely, also, this is why I think we have temples as a space to remind us of the present and to center ourselves once again. It's so easy for us to get caught up in our lives and in our jobs and our school. And we sometimes, you know, always are thinking of, okay, when's this next assignment due? When is this next project due? When is everything due? When do I have to pay this bill off by? When is this insurance due by? All of these things, all of these things that make up our lives that cause us great anxiety sometimes, that cause us great stress sometimes. This is why we have the temple or why we have this space virtually right now to once again, come back to the present and remind us that the Nembutsu is always working for us, that the Dharma is always working for us. And this is also why we say Nembutsu. This is why we say Namo Amida Butsu. We are grateful that the wisdom and compassion of Amida are able to affect us in the here and now and not just in the future. We are grateful for the fact that other power, or tariki, other power, Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion continues to work for our benefit, solely for our benefit. We, as regular, ordinary human beings who have the daily struggles and the daily, uh, the, and the daily uh, stresses of life, realize that there is the Dharma that is still working for us constantly and unceasingly. 
it, and, and in this way too, we don't have to give up our life of, of these, you know, of these obligations and uh, these, and these responsibilities. We don't have to give up this life where we, again, have to live in the United States. We have to live a certain way. We have to, uh, we have to earn in order to live. And sometimes we have to own a car. We're not the type of Buddhists who, again, have to say, okay, I'm gonna renounce everything and just give up everything. And then I will become enlightened. No, there is enlightened activity that is working for us as well. We are also able to be embraced and touched by the Dharma in order to once again help us through our lives of daily stress and daily anxiety. And this is why we say Namo Amida Butsu. So today's Gosandai is not meant to be taken too literally. It doesn't mean that we become invincible or that we become indestructible. It means that enlightened thinking and the workings of the Dharma are working for us in the present. So once again, the quote that I read today sounds kind of fantastical. It may sound a little bit like mythology. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the 10 quarters surrounding us a hundredfold, a thousandfold, rejoice in and protect us. So once again, when we say Namo Amida Butsu, when we say uh, these, when we say Namo Amida Butsu, we are, apologies, <laughs> we are saying that uh, we are saying that we acknowledge that there is a Dharma that's working for us here and now. That yes, this saying Namo Amida Butsu won't make you rich. Saying Namo Amida Butsu won't ensure or guarantee the promotion that you're that everyone is, might be seeking. Saying Namo Amida Butsu doesn't mean that you can go out and without a mask and say, oh, I won't get COVID, right? But Namo Amida Butsu is what we say when we realize that, ooh, when I go outside, I should wear a mask because interdependence. Namo Amida Butsu is, ah, sometimes mistakes happen, that's okay. And I can calm down and not get so angry from that. That's enlightened thinking that's given to us from other power. That is what's happening. So again, this Dharma talk won't make the deadlines or anxiety go away. It might, however, bring us some calm that it, uh, some calm that is the storm of our minds. Sometimes we are, uh, you know, sometimes we, we uh, can cause, get a, a lot of anxiety. And sometimes it's good to come to the Dharma to center ourselves once again. So some things to remember when anxiety and frustration come back. Frustration and anxiety is human, is part of being human. Don't punish yourself but don't succumb to it either. So as Buddhists, it's not that we don't become angry or that we don't become frustrated or that we don't experience anxiety. We do experience these things, okay? But we use the Buddhist teachings in order to help us not succumb to them. We use the Buddhist teachings to help us not to dwell on these feelings for that long. And also remember our human condition is the reason for the Nembutsu. One of these reasons why we can't, you know, why we can't fully get, uh, why we can't fully uh, take away our human emotions or our human condition is the whole reason why we have we are followers of the Nembutsu because Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion constantly touches us, and we are not alone in the community, nor are we alone in the Dharma. So yes, during this time of the pandemic it was very, very easy to feel isolated, to feel secluded and to feel alone. And yet still here we all are on Zoom today, finding different ways to engage with one another through community and through that community bond, which means for sure that while we still may not be able to get in person right away, the bonds that we share and the community and the love we feel for one another is not limited to being in person or to uh, some, yeah, or not limited to being in person. It can also be felt through Zoom as well. And we can remember that the benefits of the Dharma affect us here and now. We are not just Buddhists who just say, okay, sometime in the future, things will get better. We are also able to embrace the Dharma and to listen deeply to the teachings here and now. And we are able to let that affect us. 
And then when we realize this, we say Namo Amidabha Su. So I would like to thank you all for uh, joining me today and uh, listening to my Dharma talk. Please be safe and I hope everyone had uh, a, a pretty good start and stayed warm during this January year. In closing, would you please join me in Gashio? Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Namo Amidabutsu.